affirming the point of power. The underlying theme that runs through all the suggestions and techniques in the next two chapters deals with the importance of simultaneous time. The immediate moment or the now is where our strength lies, so it must be utilized to its fullest for the best conscious creation results. Easy enough said. But when we've been indoctrinated into the theory of linear time very thoroughly, it sometimes takes desire and persistence to break its hold on our belief system. But where better to apply our focus? After all, if our point of power is in the present, that suggests it's to our advantage to develop our ability to reside there with ease. Picture this. Surrounding you is an infinite field of probabilities representing all possible variations of events you could ever experience. See these probabilities as bright tiny sparks of silver against the background of black velvet. Now see many larger gold stars randomly spread throughout the field. These gold stars represent the probabilities that are most likely to be actualized in your life based on the moment's thoughts, attitudes and beliefs. Now, pretend you change your thoughts and emotions from, say, fear to excitement about an upcoming event. Look what happens to the field of probabilities. Some silver sparks become gold stars, and some gold stars become silver sparks. Now change your attitude about a past event and see what happens. Same thing. When we change our thoughts and emotions in the present moment, we change the most likely events that will lead to and from the present. If we remember that the point of power is right now, that now is when we select the events we will encounter in life, then we can start to utilize our incredible ability to build our life as we choose. Seth offers a great affirmation to help us become successful conscious creators, one that can literally change our life if we believe it. I create my reality, and the present is my point of power. Repeat this phrase over and over to yourself. Post it on your mirror, on the dashboard of your car. Think it before you fall asleep, awake to its litany. Fashion it into a jingle and sing song yourself to work in your car. One way we enter new beliefs into our mind is through self-hypnosis. That's exactly the tool you're using with this exercise. Breaking the bonds of fear. When we believe in cause and effect, we also tend to believe that if we're fearful of something, we have a right to be. After all, look what happened to me last week or last month or 20 years ago. That's when it started, that feeling of fear. And I've had cause many times since to meet it again. It's been with me a while now. It's no stranger in my life. But according to the structure that makes our physical reality happen, fear can't be based on yesterday's cause, and here's why. Fear is an emotion that both forms and reflects a belief, and emotions are generated in the now, in this case with the surfacing of a belief. And then an event will follow that reinforces our fear because it's selected from the field of probabilities by our emotion of fear. In other words, fear has to be generated by a belief about something before another fear-filled event can occur. Whether the event is a physical assault or a simple twinge of anxiety while reading news of violence. Fear is based on an active belief. It may sound like a bout of semantics, but it's an important point. Fear is generated in the moment by a belief held in the moment, and between the two of them, they tell the mind to organize our past to reflect their influence. So the mind sets to work and chooses probabilities that are placed into our past that verify the fear. Fear is not intimately tied to our past, building as the years progress. It can be. It's tied to our present. That we feel that the fear has been with us forever on a given issue is because we think we remember concrete past events. But the remember, but the remembrance of the past is selected in the now. Our life fans out forward and backward from the present. What we think and feel right now pulls in probabilities, some of which we will call past and some we designate as future. All creation happens now based on the workings of our mind now. 
Feelings aren't standalone items. They must be flared into action by thought. Fear is not held over from our last foray into the depths of anxiety, imprinted on our minds from the past, or unbreakable until we take our last physical breath. Since emotion follows thought, to break the cycle of fear means to break the course of our thoughts. Seth says, Your emotions trigger your memories and they organize your associations. Your emotions are generated through your beliefs. They attach themselves so that certain beliefs and emotions seem almost synonymous. So what we need to do is set aside whatever it is that's causing the fear. We have to break the cycle of thought that leads us into the emotion of fear because fear sidetracks us, it derails us. In response to fear, we literally select events that block us from our goals. Healing mentally and physically takes place when we clear our minds in the present and give it room to accept new instructions. There are two ways to stop fear. Find and change the beliefs and emotions causing it and break its hold in the now. We'll cover how to find and change beliefs later in this chapter, but now on to a technique for stopping fear dead in its tracks this very moment. Anxiety forms a negative visualization, an exceedingly effective one. Break the anxiety, break the visualization, and break the probability of a future worrisome event. We can stop thinking, but we can control the focus of our attention. And since two thoughts can be held in the same at the same time, in the mind at the same time, we can give precedence to the one of choice. So, let's test our ability to hold a little fear that most people have felt at one time or another. Let these words become real to you right now. Feel the anxiety they generate. I don't have enough money to pay my bills. Now say in your mind, wait, there are no successive moments, so there is no past. Let the tension leave your body instantly. Say, this is my reality and I can construct it any way I choose right now. Then insert a positive emotional response that offsets the fearful one. If this were a real life situation, you'd now hold on to this feeling of calmness and clarity and think to yourself something like, okay, I've created a limiting situation in the present that looks solid, but I know there are other probabilities I can choose. Since there is no linear time, I can restructure this situation by allowing other choices to enter my life. If you can stay in the now, Believe everything will work out all right. Have perfect power. Have perfect faith in your power as consciousness in physical form to choose your direction consciously. You walk the path of new solutions to your perceived problem. Sometimes it's no more difficult to break the cycle of fear than to acknowledge that fear is something that can be consciously set aside by choice. Break the fear and at times it actually breaks the belief at the same time without the need to go any further with processes or programs. That is the ultimate, isn't it? To move through life with ease and a sense of complete ability to live each moment as we choose, without the need for artificial constructs such as techniques. We can do it, you know. It may take time, but we can reach that state of being. Living in the now. Here is another technique I use when I feel myself slip into the old way of thinking. That is, when I'm concerned about something or fear what might happen in the future. I say to myself, my favorite one-liner once again, there are no successive moments. For me, that statement has such emotional impact that it immediately breaks my concentration on the issue at hand. While I'm saying it, I drop all thoughts from my mind and look at my surroundings. I see everything in clear focus, studying colors and textures and shapes. I quickly release all tension from my body. I smile. I feel the freedom this knowledge of simultaneous time brings to me. And then I think, my life is mine to build as I want to experience it. 
I am surrounded by other scenarios. This one is no longer an option. Defining your now. I carry around a paper with me at all times, tucked into a pocket or purse, but always easy to access when I feel the need. I especially make sure it accompanies me on my long walks through nature settings because I tend to do much of my inner work then. It is titled Selecting Future Probabilities, how I need to think and feel in my now. And here's what it says. One, sense my inner self with me, moment by moment, listening to my thoughts, advising me, feel it here with me. Two, Remember that moments don't flow successively. They are piecemeal together based on what I think right now and form the future in that mold. That means projecting hopeless, fearful thoughts into the future only arranges the now to create that future's possibilities. Three, feel perfect faith in myself and the universe. What perfect faith held in this moment does is release my thinking from limiting future projections. It keeps me in the now. Four, sense my goals as completed events around me now. This makes them as real as my supposed present. They have the same validity and strength and reality. What reading these four points does for me is to remind me of the structure of the universe and how it's there to support my efforts to change. I read my paper if fear surfaces, but I also read it just for the joy of the message. If I'm in my car or in a light altered state, sitting quietly watching the river or walking on the deer reserve, I'll take many minutes to absorb each statement, thinking about what it means to me as a consciousness in physical form. The process almost almost always does a magical job of drawing me out of my focus on a problem and puts everything into a very different perspective. Whiteboard assistance. When learning to stay in the now, one of the most difficult things for many to do is to break the cycle of unhelpful thoughts and feelings that insist on running through their minds. Thoughts and feelings indicative of the belief in linear time and cause and effect, i.e., I screwed up that project once before, so why do I think it will be different this time? One night, in response to utter frustration over not being able to consciously set my mind in the now and hold its course, I had a dream. I saw my mind as a wide blank slate, ready to accept completely new scripts as I wrote them in the present. From that dream, I developed a technique I called the whiteboard. Sometimes when I feel myself slipping into limiting thoughts, anxiety or old line thinking, I see my mind become a large whiteboard or screen devoid of words or feelings. I then concentrate on the whiteboard for maybe 5 seconds. Instead of fighting my thoughts and feelings into submission in order to bounce back to the present, I paste words of encouragement, encouragement on my whiteboard such as My reality is my definition. I live in a safe universe. I choose a new probability. I create everything I see. Dot 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 is no longer an option. I am free to be me. My future includes dot dot dot. The point of power is now. During my early days of metaphysics while employed by Apple, And when my goal was freedom through money, I would slap the words, I'm wealthy and free, on my whiteboard intermittently throughout my day. I did it as an affirmation, but perhaps more as a way of stopping the doubts that would arise from time to time. When you fill your mind with wide and words of wisdom, there is no room for anything else. And so you return to the now instead of lingering in the past, and the now is your point of power. For me... The whiteboard has become an effective way of utilizing the present moment and I use it as a starting point for much of my inner work. Once my mind becomes a whiteboard, then I'm ready to do whatever it is I'm working on at the time, whether it is to launch myself into a visualization scene, alter beliefs or talk to my inner self. Mixing imaging and words. 
An extension of the whiteboard technique combines words and activity. Sometimes I start my words of choice and then seg into seeing a scene that brings them alive. One time, for instance, Stan and I wanted to sell some undeveloped land we owned. Stan handled the technical details and I did my part through imaging. First on my whiteboard I saw the words, the land sold. I held the phrase in place while I said the words in my mind several times. Then the whiteboard became a screen for the living enactment of the words. There Stan and I were, standing on the land, laughing and discussing the signed contract of the sale in our hands, so happy to have brought the event to a successful conclusion. And that's eventually what happened. By the way, Seth says it doesn't matter whether we use words or images for our mind's projections. Either will work, so if you simply don't feel at ease with your visualization skills, don't worry. Simply run the words that reflect your desire through your mind. Get a sense of what you really want to accomplish and let the excitement of these words develop. Remember, it's really the emotion generated by conscious by consciousness that starts the emission of electromagnetic energy units. Thought triggers emotion. But emotion is the ingredient of starting, ingredient of, st- ingredient of strength when discussing how reality is created. Dear Diary, I especially enjoy this technique for programming the future with what I want to experience because it's relatively quick, always fun, and I don't have to be in an altered state to do it. Like the exercise above, it mixes words, emotions, and images. I pretend I'm my future self writing in her diary about an event that she's remembering from her past or what is to become my future. I start by saying, Dear Diary, and see the words handwritten across the screen of my mind. Next, I write a phrase such as, You'll never guess what happened yesterday. Then I go on to describe with excitement an event that occurred in my future self's past, but is yet to enter my reality. I've switched from writing in the diary to visualizing the scene by now but I keep up the verbal pattern in the background. My immediate self, the one in the present, laces the now with feelings of excitement and conviction that the event will come to pass. Living the half bubble. Once you feel confident of your expertise in creating vivid visual images, try this process. See yourself See yourself within a bubble that extends from the point of peripheral vision of your left eye to the farthest point of peripheral vision of the right eye. In essence, you are within a half bubble. Now divide the half bubble into equal sections. Clockwise from the left, section 1 holds a picture of your future home as you've defined it, bursting with feelings of abundance and fulfillment. Section 2 has a rendition of the bank of you, bulging with gold coins and bills coming out of the roof and windows. Section 3 denotes a scene that symbolizes your career or life's focus, pulsating with vibrancy and success. And section 4 shows you surrounded by people you love and trust, goodwill flowing freely between all. If the scenes I've described aren't the ones you desire to actualize or you already have them in place in physical reality, substitute others of choice. How about a white BMW, an Australian vacation, winning a coveted award? You're the artist and the creator, so have fun designing your new life. Seeing the camouflage. To help sense the flexibility of this reality, to really grasp that time, space and matter are illusions or camouflage, try this. Sit quietly in a room in your home. Look at a particular object, such as a dresser or wood stove. Study its shape and size. Get a sense of its solidness. Now glance around the room and tell yourself, Everything you see looks real. 
but it is only camouflage patterns of other things, things found in the inner reality. Tell yourself you're looking at idea constructions made physical. Now, start to see everything as consciousness, which has allowed itself to be molded into shapes. See the items start to become less solid, more crafted of ever-moving molecules with obvious space between them. Study an object and see through Study an object and see through it as though it's made of mist. Now do the same thing to the walls of your room and the walls of your house. Until there is no solid structure at all, simply consciousness within consciousness. Then, if you wish to continue, sense an antique chest or piece of furniture directly ahead of you. See it start to take on form and shape from the mist of consciousness, defying space and time. See it solidify into a definite object as real as your own furniture. Know that you're the sculptor that molds consciousness into objects, that you select the space in which they will appear and the time in which they find themselves. And then know this for an ancient truth, because it is.